Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. That is another day that the Lord has granted us. It's a blessed day because we are not in this day alone. He is with us and in Him believe and move and have our being. That itself is enough to... To change everything, the greatest, the biggest issue here is understanding uh, revelation knowledge. A revelation knowledge is a knowledge that is being revealed. It can be also called infused knowledge, whereby the knowledge of God is downloaded in you. And all of a sudden you have a clear understanding of things. And at times you might be able to explain those things or you might not um, explain them. So you can do it or not, but still what you have experienced is real you know whether you have the ability to to explain it or not the experience is there and that's what i'm saying the experiential knowledge experiential knowledge is the knowledge that is experienced that is not just in the head and you see the gospel has been given to us not to know it in our heads but to experience this wonderful life and we should uh, get there we should get there and that is why i keep on saying it's not about arguments it's not about how you argue with the world with everybody about that it's about the life and the experience you have on the daily basis of this truth you know the little you can share cannot be compared to the unfathomable, wonderful experience of the glory of God in your life every day and that you are growing. You don't grow by, again, arguing or fighting over what you know. You only grow by continuing in that experience. This is supposed to be personal experience it can be corporate but it's so sweet when it's also personal that is what we should focus on the experience of this life the experience of God and it can grow it can increase it can keep on growing and get better and better all right that's very important I, I like it because it's life it's, it's not uh, it's life. You, you just enjoy that kind of life. In the book of Philippians chapter 3, all right? In the book of Philippians chapter 3, this is a piece by Apostle Paul. And uh, in this piece, he talks about something very, very uh, crucial. And uh, in this chapter 3, verse... Five, he says, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. And um, I want a couple put these things together so that we may have an idea. Paul is talking about his his um, boasting in the flesh. And he wanted to address this issue of thinking that way. That things, the things of the flesh that people boast in, which are actually meaningless. But then he it was, it was meaningful to him. It was everything. It was his life. All right. This was his experience. And he was saying, look, I thought so. I thought that these things are my life. Little did I know that I was wrong because of the way he used to think he was living according 
to his thoughts. But now I'm just talking about the channel of your thoughts being the reason of your daily experiences. The experiences you have are not derived from somewhere else apart from you. You are the source of what you are experiencing, what goes through your mind. And that means every day, that means consistently. It's not something you just think about today and you forget. I'm talking about what you keep on thinking consistently. That is what determines your experiences on the daily basis. So make no mistake or be fooled if you do not uh, stick with a certain truth and experience it and, and, and meditate on it or look into it every day through your mind or with your mind, then you don't really know it and you will not experience it. It begins by with what you think, with what you are convinced of, the persuasion. This is not just thinking, you know, like you have a, an idea that just passes through your mind. No, it's, it's this conviction. It is this uh, persuasion in your heart, you know, and that determines how you see things. And then this is what I'm talking about. So he talks about certain things which are uh, worthy explanation. He first, the last time we saw that he was talking about the stock of Israel, that means the tribe, the race of Israel, that he felt is so, so special because of what the Israelites meant or were, even at the time when he was writing this. Now look at this, of the tribe of Benjamin. So there were 12 tribes of Jews, of the Jews of Israelite, of Israel, so he was so specific and reminding us and reminding everybody that, well, he was coming from that very tribe of Benjamin. Of course, that is to show you that it's not just Israel, but there is a, a specific tribe. And that tribe is known as the tribe of Benjamin. You know, this is the tribe which produced the first king. And that was called King Saul. So the first king of Israel was called Saul. And this tribe produced that king. And of course, even Paul was Saul, but then he was given another name. And uh, the name was Paul. He became Paul, but he used to be Saul. And uh, you see, as Saul was the first king, pioneered the, uh, the reign, the kingship, um, in the kingdom of the of Israel, this man, uh, the king was was Saul. So you see, even now Paul, who was Saul, was also introducing something. But the good news about Paul is that he continued in that way, whereas the first king just uh, reigned for some few days, for some few years, and then he was not fit for for that position for that uh, for that um, call and uh, another king replaced him from the tribe of judah that is uh, david so there's a connection there i just wanted to mention it so here we see him saying i am from the tribe of benjamin and that was some things that, you know every tribe you know even in the jews and the israelites every tribe felt uh, very special every tribe had its unique uh, unique capacity and calling and uh, uh, there was a prophecy upon every pro every 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 tribe in the book of genesis you see uh, Israel, that means Jacob, who, who became Israel when he was about to depart, he began to pray and prophesy and declared things that were supposed to happen in the lives of uh, his children. And among, the, what, among uh, those, there were these, uh, the, the tribe of Benjamin, and that was the last born 
and he said certain interesting things about that tribe of Benjamin, which, of course, Paul now is uh, is very proud of, and is not um, apologetic to. It's not apologetic of, of. He was so proud of, you know, proud of the that family. All right, proud of that family, and so we want to see some of the things that he said, which made him think that he was special. Jacob had prophesied something very, very special about about this tribe of. Uh, of uh, Benjamin and he said in uh, Genesis chapter 49 verse 27 he said um, that Benjamin is a, re a ravenous wolf in the morning he shall devour the prey and at night he shall divide the spoil so there's something very significant and because of that prophecy that hung upon that tribe of Israel, you know, the tribe of, of uh, sorry, the tribe of, uh, of Benjamin. So he was so, they knew, every tribe knew what was said about them. So they were so, uh, so convinced of every word that was prophesied that was said about them so it is in this spirit that he's uh, talking about the special tribe of Israel Benjamin is which is uh, the tribe of Benjamin so Benjamin is a renewal is a ravenous wolf ravenous wolf in the morning devouring the prey and at night dividing the spoil now if this was the case then in their hearts they did believe that we are so special because we are we cannot fail in this prophecy it says in the morning he shall devour the prey that means in early in the morning and they went to hunt, he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. So they felt so confident um, in this tribe of Benjamin because they understood that he's saying that they will always fight and win. There's no battle that they will fail to win because of the character that was prophesied about this tribe of Benjamin. And so they believed that when we go out in the morning, we shall devour the prey. And when we come back in the night, we divide the spoil. The spoil means that they went to the battlefield and they won because you can only divide the spoil because you have won. So this is, is something that Paul knew. He says, I'm from that tribe, from Benjamin. And you understand what our forefathers said about that tribe we are winners we do things and we we win we do not fail so that is what he wanted to make clear to everybody you know when we believe so much and we are so persuaded of our tribes you know the flesh in the, in the world where we're coming from as, as far as human mm, origins are concerned but he's saying this is what he believed well, but later he discovered there's something more or supposed to believe, you know, persuaded with that is greater than what he knew. Shalom, shalom.